The other day, I was at a kindergarten with about 20 to 30 kids on a playground and they were just running around, jumping, screaming like kids usually do. And suddenly, out of the blue, there appeared this swarm of 40 to 50 dragonflies that just descended right there on the field, right where we were. Now, some of the kids just ignored the dragonflies and continued playing. Others actively tried to catch them. And in this whole mishmash of activity, not one dragonfly was captured. Not one dragonfly bumped into a kid. And not one dragonfly bumped into another. Just try that with helicopters. Take 40 to 50 helicopters and tell the pilots to randomly fly over, under and around each other much as dragonflies do. Do you think there'd be any collisions? I have no doubt there would. I went home and I googled insect flight and found some pretty impressive facts. For example, some insects can beat their wings up to a thousand times a second. Just try this. Take your fingers and try and flap your fingers ten times a second. And if you can accomplish that, try doing it a hundred times faster. It's impossible, but just imagine the muscle design in these insects. Imagine the energy requirements. It's small wonder that our best scientists study insect flight for the purpose of bettering our own aircraft. The wing design, the way they use air turbulence and air currents, the way they utilize energy, it's, it's revolutionary. In fact, one of the world's most famous helicopters, the Sikorsky, in Russian it means dragonfly. Isn't it interesting that our most complex flying machines cannot compete with the complexity of a simple dragonfly? Why? Because man made the flying machines and God made the dragonflies. Now I don't know about you, but for me it doesn't make any sense that some random, non-intelligent force called evolution could end up creating living systems that are far more complex than anything man has ever made. God is alive. And everywhere you look, there's evidence for his existence. Just look in the mirror.